This video was sponsored by PCBWay. Hello everyone, this is the first in a series of videos about the combustion engine I've been yapping about for a few months now. Today I'll be talking about the piston and the basic design of the engine. So one day I was thinking of making an engine with the power of a two-stroke but the efficiency of a four-stroke. My initial design was based on two compression cylinders and one large combustion cylinder. As the air got compressed in the compression cylinders, the exhaust gases would leave the combustion cylinder, since all the pistons were at a zero degree offset to each other. Then I realized that one of the compression cylinders isn't really necessary, since one is enough to do the job. Then again, I realized that by offsetting the pistons by a few degrees, it could uh, increase the efficiency by a huge amount. One model indicated a 16% efficiency gain compared to an auto cycle engine of the same specs. This all happened almost exactly one year ago. Obviously, I got very excited with this idea and I even started writing a patent for it recently. After everything was complete and got ready to send out the patent, I discovered this on YouTube Shorts. My exact design from 14 years ago. Alright, it's not really the exact same design. You see, in my design, the combustion piston is slightly behind the compression piston. The Scuderi engine, which by the way is the engine I'm talking about, does this the exact opposite way. You might think that my engine is worse because, well, I'm the beginner. But in reality, having the pistons configured as in the Scuderi engine is really bad for efficiency. To understand why, we need to first understand the thermodynamics that are at play and most importantly PV graphs. If you didn't slip through the thermodynamics classes in high school, you might remember these two formulas. These are the absolute basics of thermodynamics and using these two formulas, you can calculate the pressure and volume of the gases you're working with. This is very important because pressure times volume gives you work, which you can later on use to estimate the power output of your engine and the efficiency of it. The way you would use the pressure and volume of the working gases to estimate the power output and efficiency of your engine is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is plot these values in the PV graph. Right here I made a pretty simple PV graph of a very low com uh, compression engine. For example, by increasing the compression of the engine, you can see that not only the stroke of the piston increase, but also the pressure of the working gas. By igniting the gas at this higher pressure, we get a higher combustion peak pressure, which will also increase the area of this graph, which will in turn increase our the work that the engine will produce. I hope that this demonstration made it easier to grasp why higher compression engines are more efficient and make more power. You should keep in mind that this extra compression doesn't require any extra fuel, so this will increase the thermodynamic efficiency of your engine. Getting back to the Scuderi engine, the spark plug fires after the combustion piston had reached up that center. This is bad because the engine doesn't take advantage of all the volume inside of the second cylinder, which leads to a lower power output than the maximum potential. Also, the geometry of the engine doesn't allow all of the compressed mixture to flow into the combustion cylinder. This is bad because the engine just went through the trouble of compressing that mixture and if the, ex if the intake valves open too fast, that compressed mixture will just get blown out of the intake port. As you could imagine, that loss of compressed air and fuel mixture isn't very good for efficiency. Overall, this sh should be what the cycle of this engine looks like. As you can see, the compression isn't very high because as I said before, the geometry itself doesn't allow that. And you can also notice the spiky thing here, which is a consequence of the transfer port's opening. That spike eating in the cycle is a dead spot, and that allows frictional losses to occur and build up as the engine keeps running, which is very bad again for efficiency. In the end, the Scuderi engine relies heavily on the Miller cycle to increase efficiency. 
By increasing the size of the combustion piston, the combustion cylinder will also get bigger. The inventor of this engine says that this is a more compact way of making a Miller cycle, which should increase specific power output. So now you might ask, what makes my engine more efficient? Well, to give you a very short answer, my engine relies on the burn gases to make extra power by letting some stay inside of the combustion cylinder to burn along with the fresh mixture. Basically, the exhaust gases, which are still hot, will heat up the fresh air and fuel mixture, which will increase their pressure. This will in turn lead to a higher compression ratio, and you can think of it that the engine thinks it's slightly bigger than before, and that will lead to a flatter power curve, which should increase power and should compensate for the less intense heat of combustion. Now, as I said, the exhaust gases, which are basically impurities in this scenario, will decrease the max combustion temperature. This will in turn lead to a lower peak combustion pressure, but it's not really that big of a deal because this flatter curve should compensate for that. Also, because the combustion temperature is lower, uh, the engine will lead or will make less NOx emissions, which is very good for the environment. To give you a super basic understanding of what the burn gases do to the efficiency, you can imagine a cylinder with air in it. As long as you have a big enough flywheel, if you gave it a spin, it would act almost exactly the same as a regular wheel. The piston will compress the air to start with, but as it reached top that center, it would be pushed back down by the compressed air, and the cycle would repeat itself. Now, imagine the same cylinder but with a vacuum inside. As the piston travels up, as it nears the top of its stroke, a quantity of air will be let into the cylinder. As the piston travels down again, that air will keep pushing on the piston until it reaches bottom that center, after which the vacuum will be reintroduced. Notice as the cycle repeats itself, the cylinder will act almost like an engine, because that extra expansion of air at the end adds energy into the system. In principle this would be a really bad steam engine, but still it's an engine, which is integrated inside of the split cycle engine. So this is why that extra amount of gas which is basically added into the picture while the piston travels up increases efficiency. Alright, so I think I slightly rushed the explanation earlier, so here is the cutaway of the engine infusion so you can see what's happening better. On the left side you have the carburetor which will feed the air and fuel mixture into the compression cylinder. After the cylinder is full of gas, the compression piston will compress the mixture until the combustion piston gets to half of its stroke, after which the transfer ports will open. After all the mixture has been transferred into the combustion cylinder, the combustion piston does the rest of the compression until the spark plug fires, which will allow for the combustion stroke. After both the pistons are at BDC again, the exhaust port will open, allowing some of the burnt gases to leave the engine and that will happen only until the combustion piston gets to the half of its stroke again because after that the transfer ports will open again, so the cycle is finished. Now you might think that this difference would be enough to rewrite the patent or in the worst case scenario write a paper about the cycle. However, in reality while doing some research uh, while writing the script for this video, I discovered this. This time this is my exact same design and also the basic design of this type of engine was conceived over 100 years ago. Anyway, now getting to the combustion piston, it was designed to work at 100 bar. Now the safety factor is 2 so it could theoretically survive 200 bar. In reality, this piston won't be exposed to anything more than 68 bar, but it's good to have some extra safety margin. Also, the max operating temperature of this piston will be 240 degrees Celsius or 460 Fahrenheit. 
again the max temperature will probably be quite a bit lower maybe 200 celsius but it's better to be safe than sorry also the piston will be cooled by two high speed oil jets injected at 9 bar into the engine this might seem like a lot but it's really necessary to have a high enough flow rate to make this piston i chose 2618 aluminum alloy because it is very strong and has great thermal conductivity I actually had trouble finding anyone who would work with this alloy that could also achieve the low tolerances that I needed, so I actually switched alloys to 7075 aluminum because it is actually quite similar to 2618. It is just slightly weaker at the 240 degrees Celsius that I mentioned, but otherwise it is slightly stronger at cooler temperatures like 100 to 200 degrees Celsius. The piston rings are made out of 316L stainless steel sheet metal for no apparent reason. The gas rings are 0.5mm in thickness and the oil rings are 0.2mm. This is because they are going to be stacked inside of the same groove on the piston as a pair of two. To make these parts I chose this video sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturing company that focuses on PCB prototype fabrication but also deals with CNC machining, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication and 3D printing, both metal and polymer. For CNC machining their tolerances go as low as 0.02 mm, but if you need an even tighter tolerance, you can specify that and PCBWay will deal with it. Also, their prices are very competitive. From personal experience, I can tell you that from local shops, I got offers more than twice as expensive as the ones I got from PCBWay. For a very quick estimation of how expensive your order will get, PCBWay gives you an instant quote before you even save your order. Make sure to try out their services by clicking the link in the video description. And with that said, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Alright, the package just arrived, so let's see how the parts came out. The gas rings were slightly too thick, but PCBWay informed me about this before even making them. This isn't a huge problem, I just need to send a few hundreds of a millimeter of them, so they can fit the ring grooves on the piston. After about half an hour of sanding, I had before me the coolest piston I've seen in real life. To hold the rings in their grooves, I printed a simple conical thing that the piston will stay inside until the cylinder and other engine parts are made. This offers some protection, especially for the oil rings, which are really fragile. The compression piston isn't done yet, but I can still show you a 3D printed model. As you can see, this piston is a lot thinner compared to the combustion piston because it not only works at cooler temperatures but will also face way lower pressures. As you could imagine, this is another big advantage of a split cycle engine since one side can be made really light because it's not exposed to any flame. In terms of power output, this engine should achieve 15 horsepower or 11.5 kilowatts at 18,000 RPM with a total displacement of 72 cc. With all the losses considered and these numbers, this engine should have an efficiency of 43%. If you think this project is interesting, smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. As for future projects, I am currently working on a very big rocket engine as a tribute to the engine that gave life to this channel. All I am saying is that this engine will fit within the I class of Impulse and I actually have the first part, this is the motor tube. So if that sounds like something you'd watch, stay tuned. Also, you might have noticed an increase in quality from older videos. This is because I bought a new camera. It's an Insta360 GO 3S and it's barely larger than my thumb, so that means that it can fit inside the rocket. Alright, this was a pretty short video, it was more of an update of what I'm working on, but there is definitely a lot more content to come. If you need a more in-depth explanation of how this engine works, let me know in the comments because I will make a sequel of this video just about the theory. And remember, 
The more views my videos get, the faster I can finish these projects. So sharing this with your friends would really help. With that said, thanks for watching, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!